I did just walk across it in my shoes. I've been sitting here for a few minutes. So while I'm at it, I don't know if you can tell, my shoes are soaked. And not because I just walked across the creek in them, but for five or six hours of today, it poured down rain. And hiking on the Forest Service roads and that sort of thing. So while I'm at it, I'm going to give a shout out um, on the shoes, on the socks, everything. And I will post links to these. Um, what I've got on, I've got a sock liner and then a sock. It's the Njenji toe socks. Um, they make a liner and then they make like a mid-weight hiker sock. And then I've got the shoes and then I've got the gaiters. And considering my feet have been soaked for five, six, well, most of today, it's, it really started raining at nine o'clock. That's why I got a late start. And uh, my feet have just been wet all day and no hot spots, zero zip. The only thing that I've done is every morning I've been putting monkey butt powder on my feet and then the socks are still wet from the previous day from sweating but the liner socks with the other socks on them you can see I've got a liner sock the lighter gray and then a thicker heavier sock which is the dark gray and then the gaiters um, Last year on the trail, I had problems with blisters almost from the start. And uh, as soon as I get to camp, I can't wait to get out of these wet-ass shoes. Um, but I'm really kind of surprised that no hot spots. doesn't feel like I've got any blisters. Now, that could change when I get to camp, and if it does, I'll let you know. But if these shoes and socks combo went... Uh, it's 5.02 now, so 9, 10, 11, 12. Eight hours of being wet and no blisters. That's pretty amazing. So that will be my next gear review on the trail. My footwear. So, so far for the 60 or so miles that I've hiked, I've used the stock insoles and my ultra uh, shoes and the shoes that I'm wearing are highly praised by people that hike the Appalachian Trail and Pacific Crest Trail and Continental Divide Trail and when I was looking at the specs one thing I noticed is they are a zero degree incline most trail running shoes have the heel slightly elevated like you're leaning forward on your toes. And it might only be a few degrees, but that helps a lot of people um, that have sore backs and that sort of thing. So the Altras have just been great so far. No blisters, even though I've hiked all day yesterday with soaking wet feet but this morning i wanted to try the super feet greens which which hikers also recommend and i put them on about four miles ago um, i took the cut the stock insoles out and just put the super feet in and when i put the shoes on the first thing i noticed was the back of the shoe was lower on my heel. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, of course, I have my gaiters on. So this part right here was lower on the ball of my heel. You see where I'm pointing? This part was like this part. So the super feet green uh, was starting to create a hot spot. Hot spot on the ball of the back of my foot within four miles so when I stopped to take a break I took everything out of the backpack um, 
plus I needed my uh, toiletries. I took a nice long walk into the woods and then I come back and I switched the uh, stock insoles, put them back in and as soon as I put them on they just felt amazing again. So uh, this is a continuation of my review of the Ultra Lone Peak 3s. I believe if that's the wrong name I will fix it in editing. Do not wear super feet green with them or you're definitely going to have blisters on the back of your foot. Trail review of the Ingenji toe socks and the liners. Um, last year, almost from the very beginning, I had blisters on my feet. This year, I've hiked in nine hour long rain, shoes soaked, socks soaked. Not a single blister yet, knock on wood. Um, I still got about six days to go of this hike to complete the trail. And uh, I did a lot of things different this year that is related to foot care. And it really starts with even down to the shoes and wearing gaiters to keep debris from getting inside your socks and working their way down into the feet. Now, wearing the gaiters doesn't get keep everything out. So if you do a stream crossing with your shoes on, you're probably going to get some sand in there or something like that that works in through the uh, around the shoe where the gaiter covers up. But for the most part, it does keep rocks and sticks and leaves and that sort of thing out of there. Um, another thing I've been doing every morning, and I already put it back up, so let me grab it back out. Try to do this one-handed. You get used to doing stuff one-handed when you are videoing while hiking. Several years ago, a friend of mine bought this for me. It's anti-monkey butt, anti-friction powder with calamine. And I kind of laughed it off as like a gimmicky thing. But uh, I started hearing about other hikers using it. <laughs> and I was like, huh, maybe I should dig this out so four or five years after they bought it for me I, I've used it on this hike every morning and every evening I put it on my feet and uh, you can actually see where some sprayed over onto my crocs but uh, you know they, they helps keep your feet dry when they perspire which in turn keeps your socks dry which in turn keeps blisters down so my foot care this year has been absolutely great uh, the crocs i got them a size and a half too large because my feet swelled up last year and they're, they're actually swollen this year but not as bad as last year and the crocs being a size and a half too large is just way too big um, probably when i get home i'm going to order another pair because those are really comfortable actually i, I was kind of surprised these are the uh I knew I was going to not remember the series. Um, they're, I can't remember what the exact series are. I'll look that up. Oh, it doesn't say it in, inside. Nope. So, whatever they are, they work really well. Stream crossings around camp. Super comfortable. Um, if I got a blister or something on my foot, I would even consider hiking in them with no socks on or or, you know, not necessarily. Let me rephrase that. They're comfortable enough you could probably hike in them as long as the fit and feel was correct. But with mine being a little too big, I probably wouldn't risk it. But otherwise, they'd be fine. So that's it for foot care. And Gingy socks, those are the mid-calf hikers. And then the uh, liners. Uh, the liners of the lighter collar. So uh, if you have troubles with blisters on your feet, give them a try.